Hello friends, last week in my video, I discussed with you whether the bulls had the firepower to take the markets higher. Now, the Hindenburg factor on Adani's uh, uh, group company shares and the overall markets continued to uh, uh, basically impact sentiments. In this week's video, I want to specifically discuss when and how can the markets overcome the Hindenburg factor and move ahead to business as usual mode. So let's dive right in and on your screen right now is the market roundup window that tells me that uh, the rally was led by the bank nifty and the uh, uh, nifty 50 brought up the rear. The US dollar index, the Dixie, gained uh, uh, in the latter half of the week and that impacted commodity prices as bullion energy all came down. I'm particularly pleased with the way oil and gas prices have come down with a particular emphasis on natural gas because this is something I've covered in great detail in very detailed uh, editorial posts on our free telegram channel which you may please uh, feel free to join. Links are in the description below the video as in the pinned comment below the video as well. Now the USD INR, the dollar versus the Indian rupee rose and uh, uh, that created a little bit of a pressure on domestic markets. 10 year benchmark bond yields fell a full 10 basis points as uh, a flight to safety was seen and bond buying returned. The NSE lost a little over 1% uh, 1 uh, in market capitalization, which tells me that the rally was more due to the powerful short covering, especially on Friday, uh, uh, which we saw uh, in the latter half of the trading session that boosted indices. The US uh, markets were uh, more or less uh, up, barring the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which uh, showed mild uh, losses but uh, the US markets provided uh, uh, ample tailwinds. Coming now to our domestic uh, uh, market indicators, you're seeing MWPL rise, which is routine for the first three trading uh, weeks of any derivative series. However, do note that at 27.07%, uh, the MWPL has risen marginally lower than uh, uh, the previous and the month prior to the previous month, which means risk appetite definitely seems to be marginally lower, which is not uh, uh, really surprising seeing the uh, weakness in the indices. Now for the uh, turnover, what you are seeing is that the turnover has risen in indices and fallen in stock futures. This is a sign of contraction of risk appetite. Now I've recorded a short video uh, uh, about what constitutes uh, risk appetite and how you measure risk appetite. As a matter of fact, there's a special segment uh, uh, towards the fag end of this video about retail risk appetite. And uh, uh, what you're seeing is trading was focused around lower, relatively lower risk index futures rather than stock futures. Looking at the advanced decline ratio after a two week period of staying below one, the advanced decline ratio has climbed above one. This is an average of all the five trading sessions of the week. The uh, Nifty has uh, also bounced back to log weekly gains and the advanced decline ratio has also climbed above one. This shows the nervousness in the undertone seems to be subsiding a little bit. The Nifty and the prompt uh, Nifty and the Bank Nifty prompt futures uh, uh, basis analysis shows uh, basis contracted very, very sharply. As a matter of fact, the Bank Nifty's basis is down by more than 50%. The uh, Nifty uh, uh, basis has also uh, fallen uh, close to 50%, not although not exactly 50 And this is something that I had uh, mentioned in my uh, uh, social media posts, videos, and my live mint column that such high basis levels are unsustainable. And as the derivative series uh, progresses along, the basis does tend to contract just like options premia. So keep an eye on the basis 
as long as the basis is positive that means the futures are above uh, uh, at a premium to cash the bulls still have a fighting chance now for our in-house exclusive uh, indicator the impetus which you've uh, trusted for seven quarters now both the nifty and the bank nifty impetus were higher and that tells me that there was force in the buying now uh, we've seen how the forceful buying came from short covering rather than fresh buying but the statistical uh, uh, reading of the force does not discriminate between short covering and fresh buying it just says the buying was aggressive now this is a weekly chart if you actually break it up to a daily chart uh, uh, which i haven't enclosed here you will see that the impetus actually jumped on friday and friday was a short covering day so we need to watch in the coming week if the price and the impetus are rising in tandem now for the lwtd this is a latest uh, indicator from us and that tells us even though the nifty has logged 1.42 percent gain on a week on week basis the lwtd remains below zero and it's flat line if at all it's a uh, 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 fallen marginally that tells me that fresh buying might be muted and small in quantum it could always change on a day on day basis but as we stand right now the lwtd is below zero for the fifth consecutive week in a row and that's not exactly good news for the bulls friends i now come to the bond market which you know is something that's very close to my heart and the budget which uh, uh, has uh, basically opened up a huge opportunity for the return conscious risk averse investor by way of uh, more than 15 trillion rupees that the government of India needs to borrow majority of which is admittedly from the bond market and approximately between a 2.75 to 3 trillion rupees from the small savings market and the rates in the small savings have been raised. So uh, uh, I've written a very detailed uh, uh, editorial on our free telegram channel about the opportunity in the budget uh, for fixed income investors. Do take uh, uh, some time out to uh, basically update yourself about this wonderful opportunity. Uh, this is a 100% government guaranteed uh, saving instrument in the post office. Uh, and uh, uh, the yield, of course, is sharply higher. So are the investable limits. You can invest double of what you were allowed earlier. The details are all in there. Now for the weekly chart of uh, the bond yields uh, on your screen. Uh, bond yields have fallen off a cliff, falling 10 basis points because safe heaven buying emerged in bonds. The bond market is very clearly uh, saying that, hey, we expect the government to launch uh, a whole lot new uh, series of bonds. And we don't know whether uh, inflation is going to be uh, under control or not, or what the coupon rate is likely to be. So safe heaven buying also because of the Hindenburg factor uh, uh, was seen in the bond market as uh, uh, traders fled from uh, the equities uh, uh, segment. So would I write out a check for uh, uh, the fixed income markets? Yes, as soon as the budget notification is in place and the expanded limits, the doubled limits come into play in uh, 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 the small saving schemes, I am going to write out checks. And as and when I do, I will post updates on our free Telegram channel. Friends, I now come to the Bank Nifty, which uh, uh, took the lion's share in uh, the gains. It rose 2.86%, as you can see on the daily chart on your screen, by rising on four out of five trading sessions. Wednesday was the only day the Bank Nifty was in red, and it was a budget day. Now, the price is marginally below the 25 day exponential moving average which is a month long holding on cost of an average bull i take 25 days for the bank nifty and 20 days for the nifty 50 due to the higher volatility in the bank nifty the moving average itself is uh, facing downwards that uh, basically tells me that there is 
marginal amount of nervousness in the market. What we need to see is the Bank Nifty trading sustainably above 42,000 levels and that should put the uh, uh, bulls in a slightly more comfortable situation. Turning to the weekly chart of the Bank Nifty, what we are seeing is uh, uh, just about kind of a bullish piercing pattern. I would have wanted the bullish uh, uh, candle of the last week to pierce into deeper into the uh, bearish uh, power candle of the week prior. But like I discussed last week, the price is above again of its 25 week exponential moving average, which is a six month holding on cost of an average bull. And as long as the price is touching the moving average and rising, it was just a mean reversion and corrective fall. But if the price is staying below the moving average, then chances are that fresh uh, downsides could be opening up. Now, the next two or three weeks are pretty crucial. If the price is staying below the moving average and obviously the moving average in that case would have to turn downwards then the medium term outlook would start to get shaky. Till then, we still have some hope. Friends, in the week before last, this index was at number four on the most volatile counters list in our in-house statistical beta list. Last week, it rose one notch to reach number three. Not very welcome uh, indication because higher volatility is invariably a sign of challenge for a retail trader. Now, last week, I advocated a range between 41,800 on the upside and 38,850 on the downside, which was overcome on the upside because the high was 42,015, 1.5. So my uh, resistance area was overcome by 215 points, uh, all thanks to the uh, uh, powerful short covering rally on Friday. In the coming week, I expect an uh, expected range between 43,050 on the upside and 39,950 on the downside. I would still trade uh, fairly light on the bank Nifty. Friends, I now turn to the Nifty 50, which uh, gained 1.42% uh, and it rose on three out of five trading sessions as the daily chart on your screen shows you. And it's taken support on a thick, prominent, falling red trend line, which was connecting all the tops made from October 2021 onwards. The price is below its 20 day moving average, which is a month long holding on cost of an average bull. And the moving average itself is sloping lower. That tells you that uh, the Nifty is facing some amount of nervousness at higher levels. And we need, like I said last week, we need to trade above the 20-day uh, moving average, number one. Number two, above the 18,115 and preferably above the 18,350 levels before bulls can be back in the driver's seat. Turning to the uh, weekly chart on your screen, what you're seeing is again, bullish candle which is attempting to pierce the previous week's bearish candle. I'm saying attempting because it should have been deeper into the body of the previous week's bullish bearish candle. The price has closed above its 25 week exponential moving average and I've told you about mean reversion. The same thing applies in the bank nifty for more than three or four weeks in a row. So, uh, uh, what we do need to see is wait and watch for a couple of weeks more. But should the Nifty go above the 18,115 and then 18,350 levels, I think bulls are back in the driver's seat. Friends, in the week before last, uh, the Nifty was at uh, number 17 on our most uh, volatile list that we maintain in-house. It rose four notches to number 13. Again, not a great development for uh, retail traders because higher volatility invariably provides challenges. Last week, I advocated a range between 18,100 on the upside and 17,100 on the downside, which held perfectly well. In the coming week, I expect a range between 18,350 and 17,350. Here again, I would uh, uh, like last week 
advise trading extremely lightly because the volatility in the market still remains high. Now, friends, I promised you about uh, 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 sharing my two bits about whether and when the markets can shake off the Hindenburg factor and move along and ahead. In the 1960s, the Bank of England uh, was approached by the Church of England and the church wanted to park its money in equity markets, but the condition was that we do not want to see our portfolio go down. So after we buy, the stocks should not go down. Time the market and handle God's money. Nobody wanted to take up that challenge. There was an economist in England by the name of Edwin Kopok. If you Google search Edwin Kopok, you will see there is a wonderful oscillator called the Edwin Kopok oscillator that only and only works in timing when the markets will bottom out. It's not as good in timing tops. So here we are talking about when the markets will shake off the nervousness. So we take help from Kopok's theory. Now Kopok said, if I'm going to handle the Church of England's money, which is money of God, let God answer my question first. How long does it take an average human being to shrug off grief, sadness, bereavement? All right. So he found by visiting many churches and talking to priests that the highest form of grief is of a death of a, a, a beloved one. And the biggest grief is by a widow without any children and who's not financially secure. So she grieves for her husband the most. So he found that widows without any issues and monetary support also tend to get over their grief and move ahead with life between 11 to 14 months. So in the stock market, on an intraday basis, on hourly charts, it is said if the markets are falling, they tend to bottom out between 11 to 14 bars. In the short term, on daily charts, 11 to 14 days or candles. On medium term uh, 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 basis, uh, swing basis, 11 to 14 weeks. And on long term bearishness ends after 11 to 14 months of a decline. You can go ahead and check it from uh, the turn of the century on uh, daily, weekly and monthly charts and stand the test of time. So now uh, we've already seen more than 10 days into uh, the Hindenburg the report being released in the market. We basically uh, should be seeing some amount of uh, lack of uh, nervousness now because the market should brush off uh, the nervousness beyond a point. Uh, Adani shares are not very he well held uh, uh, by retail traders, uh, at least Adani Enterprises and uh, uh, markets do tend to move ahead. Remember 2014, the ISIS uh, videos of beheading used to come in. Markets used to get nervous and over a period of time, it was business as usual. Markets are forward looking. They will get over the Hindenburg report temporarily. And unless there are some new factors coming in, some new triggers coming in, I think between 11 to 14. Now I need to see whether it is 11 days to 14 days or 11 weeks to 14 weeks is when as per the Kopak oscillator will the market get over the Hindenburg issue. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed and uh, uh, I'll uh, keep updating more of this on our free telegram channel. Do connect with me there. Friends, I now come to the last bit of uh, uh, a statistical chart reading wherein I uh, basically dissect the risk appetite of uh, the average retail trader by the footprint of his uh, trades in uh, index option futures versus stock options and futures. What you are seeing on the daily chart on your screen is the uh, sky blue line which uh, indicates uh, stock option futures is as high as it was last week. So the turnover in individual stock options as a total percentage of the total FNO turnover of the week is buoyant or high. Now, when traders trade more of options rather than futures, and I've recorded a, a short video on my uh, YouTube channel, please take a look at it as to why traders move from options to futures and what happens when they move from uh, indices to stocks and vice versa. So I'll explain to you that in greater detail. 
Here, they are trading uh, stocks, but in options rather than futures. That is low risk. And stock futures turnover itself has eased on a week-on-week -week basis. Index futures turnover is almost flattish. And the next chart on your screen tells you that index options turnover has fallen like it always does on Friday because Thursday is the weekly of index options expiry. But Friday's decline is still keeping it at levels higher than the prior Friday. So more of trading is in index options than in index futures, than in stock options and the least amount is in stock futures. So as you can see, traders are taking a very, very low risk approach. They are playing more in, in uh, options that to index options, least volatile as compared to stock options, stock uh, futures and options. So this needs to improve before I can say that the markets will go up again. Friends, I now come to the most uh, popular segment of this video for the statistically inclined traders. I indicate, I suggest five stocks that have gained the most amount of uh, impetus on Friday. So you take small exposure, wait for large price moves on Monday and five stocks that have lost the most amount of impetus on Friday where you take big exposure, wait for small price move, that helps scalpers. Now, if you need to update yourself with this list from Tuesday through uh, Friday, do uh, join our free Telegram list, I, as a Telegram channel. I update uh, this on a daily basis and a whole lot of other stuff. The most amount of research that we put up from our uh, end is always on Telegram, uh, uh, then on uh, uh, other social media platforms. But uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, reports that we don't put out on other uh, platforms. They are only unique to the Telegram channel. Do, do join me there. So the list of stocks that gain the most amount of impetus on Friday, where you take uh, small exposure, wait for large price moves, is led by DV's Lab, followed by HDFC Life, then by Mahindra and Mahindra, ITC and MFSL. The list of stocks that lost impetus was led by ICICI General Insurance, led, followed by uh, uh, Asian Paints, Atul, Coforge and JSW Steel. Friends, I want to hear from you about how our work is helping you trade the markets better. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. So please keep your comments coming. They keep us going. And before I uh, say goodbye, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being put up out here. And hey, share my videos with like-minded, smart traders like yourself so I reach out to a wider audience. I wish you have a very, very profitable week ahead. Have a great week. Stay profitable. Trade light. All the best.